Whipping all this dope up in the trap house We fuck all you bitches at the trap house I can't trust you, all, can't give you real address I can't trust you, all, can't give you real address They don't mean that be like Jerry Stagger I might fall in love with my trap house Stay savage, stay savage, your boy Shino Ventura, what's poppin'? Today we are back, and today we gonna be talking about some Boruto episode 77. Yes, uh, it's been a grip, you know what I'm saying? But you know what? I've been planning on making these videos as weekly as possible, or try to make them every other day, essentially. Um, I'm more so falling in the category of weekly as of lately. But today we're gonna talk about episode 77, at least bits and pieces, right? So as you guys know, things have got really lit for the Boruto anime in terms of this arc. This is an arc that's more so dedicated to Mitsuki. You know, we got the new intro going on as well as the new outro that is completely dedicated to Mitsuki. So everything that we know from this arc is going to be basically going behind Mitsuki. And in this episode, this is by pretty much like the climax to figuring out what the thoughts of the snake was. What was Mitsuki actually thinking when he sent that snake out after Boruto and stuff like that? You know what I'm saying? Obviously, because he wanted the snake to seek out Boruto. And we're going to see, you know, obviously Boruto get Garaga basically, uh, you know, under his control. So that's a bit of jumping into the end of the episode. But like, you know, I kind of saw it going along those lines. Once I seen Oda, I had a feeling that it was going to go somewhere in that path. But I thought it maybe would have been more influential for Sarada. You know, I thought maybe that was going to be something that we see happen to Sarada. But then when I start to see like Garaga talks about trust and I start to see him talk about how he was betrayed by a human and stuff like that I felt as though this was gonna go along those lines because Boruto was gonna be that one person that he could probably build trust up with and you know essentially he was gonna want to go with him so this is gonna basically stop all the Hey Shino, do you think uh, Boruto's gonna get a lion as a summoning? Hey Shino, do you think he's gonna get a monkey as a summoning? Hey Shino, you think he's gonna get a hawk as a summoning? Well guys, <laughs> um, I'm sorry to break it to you, but the primary uses that we will be probably seeing in this series will be snake. Uh, and not toad, not monkey, not, you know, lion, tigers, and bears, oh my. You know, uh, obviously these were a lot of questions that were asked from me. Like, a lot of people were asking me about these different questions and asking me about these different things regarding, you know, the series. And it was like, what do I feel Boruto is going to get as his, like, summoning companion? So, I'm going to keep it a buck, like... It, it's a snake bro it's, it's there it's like you, we can't do anything about it it's already happened you know we just kind of got to go with the flow and just let it be what it is and honestly i'm not mad with that you know it just goes to show that how much boruto is completely different from Sa uh, naruto you know obviously he's more like sasuke um that's what i was going to say after that you know he's honestly leading a lot towards sasuke but at the same time we're starting to see him you know develop his own personal traits while also being like sasuke but more so leaning towards naruto and then we honestly we see boruto do some of his own things up in there you know i know a lot of people like to put his personality on naruto as well as sasuke but at some moments and sometimes in the series, and that's what I think the writers are doing very well, they're giving Boruto his own spotlight, you know, because he would do things that, you know, neither Naruto or Sasuke would do because, you know, there are moments where Boruto is on his heroic shit and he wants to save everybody kick. And then there's also moments where Boruto is really, really selfish. And, you know, that's some things we've seen from Sasuke, the selfish side. But then there's also moments where Boruto is just kind of in a neutral party. You know, he's just kind of going with the flow and letting, you know, the teammates dictate what's going on. You know, Sarada has influenced him to do different things. And that's something that we never really saw Naruto do. Naruto usually was the person that was influencing other people to do different things. You see Shikadai actually, you know, tell Boruto different things and influence his character and his personality. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about in this specific arc. I'm talking about, like, early on in the series and early on in the franchise, you know, with the whole Ryogi arc, you know, obviously the Byakuya gang or whatever. You know, you see, like, Shikadai actually, you know, influencing him. Denki influencing him. You know what I'm saying? These people are actually, like, you know, giving Boruto some type of influence versus, you know, in the previous series, we saw Sasuke just kind of being on his own, didn't really give a shit about anybody, and, you know, obviously influenced the people of the Taka, but more so to his use. You know, it was more for a selfish cause. Look, this is for me. You know, you work for me. Do what I tell you. And then, you know, we had Naruto, who was it being the influencer, you know, giving everybody all this passion and giving everybody all this drive versus Boruto was just kind 
kind of dare, you know, not to mention like the people that we see doing missions, like we see Sarda, we see Shikadai, we see Chocho, Inojin, you know, you see Metal Lead, Iwabi, they have their own driven things, you know, it's not like Boruto is sitting there motivating them to do different things, you know, obviously once Sakura saw, you know, Sasuke and Naruto get so strong, she wanted to get stronger, you know, and she wanted, they, they wanted to improve, you know, obviously Metal, I mean, Rock Lee saw Naruto get stronger and he wanted to improve through that. And now we like actually seeing, you know, these ninjas just wanting to improve on their own. And it's not necessarily because one person is just above them, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of weird because, you know, when we come from Naruto, we used to seeing this thing. Now, in terms of this episode, I'm going to keep it a buck. It was pretty cut and dry. Um, it wasn't like nothing that they could have added a whole bunch of stuff to. It was like strictly to the point, you know. And that's one thing I thought was pretty dope about it. You know, they didn't beat around the bush because, you know, sometimes they'll get into these episodes and then they'll hit us with a flashback and then like prolong it and kind of stretch it out. And I think that's what they did really well with episode 77. They gave it to us like cut and dry. You know, this is what's going on. This is what's about to happen. You know, we about to see, you know, Boruto go against Garaga and you know essentially this is gonna how it's gonna unfold you know not you know boruto going against garaga and then it's cutting back to like the hokages or you know naruto and his uh you know his estate talking to Tsunade, talking to kakashi you know fussing with the advisors and shit like that which we saw in previous episodes and i felt like that's something they used to drag it out obviously it's really nice to see naruto talk with Tsunade and kakashi about being hokage and hokage things but like you know they're kind of dragging it out you know at that point because it's like we know obviously you guys are upset about this you know we know things are going to take place at the village and shit like that uh obviously the yurito portion was very important um that's something that we had to see if we didn't see yurito you know obviously we wouldn't have a lot of key information of what's going on but like kind of when we just saw you know Tsunade's aftermath after her was being mad you know kind of like where it was just more so you know they, her, she was like oh how can you do this like way later you know obviously she was upset in the moment and she spoke upon it but then she talks about how she's been prolonging the advisors and shit in like the previous episode so it's like you know i get what you're doing you know obviously you're giving insight to what you're doing you know the advisors are just trying to put out a rogue hit for mitsuki basically sending the ambu after him, him essentially and you know obviously trying to stop that but at the same time you know this is what we expect of the advisors this is what we know of them like this is what they fucking do those old little bastards are so fucking annoying because it's like yo Naruto's the Hokage. Let him do Hokage shit. Who are you to give it like you supposed to give him advice, nigga? Advisor, give him advice. Like, bitch, don't tell him what to do or take action in your own hands. And you know, that's kind of something we always saw. Those advisors always had like this mad influence in the series, man. And I'm just like, why? You know, like we haven't seen y'all square up. We haven't seen y'all fight. Like the only one that was close to squaring up and doing some shit was Donzo, and then everybody hates him. But hey, you know, at the same time, I respect them for actually fighting. These are two advisors. They just be there, just running their fucking mouths, dog. And I'm just like, yo, shut up. Like, go sit down. Let Naruto do the job. Like, let Tsunade do her job. Let Kakashi do his job. You guys are just always just trying to influence some shit and you're just not making the situation any better but as the episode progress we find out things about yudito we find out things about this mysterious group that's helping mitsuki or essentially leading mitsuki to something it seems like they're going to the land of earth which was explained at the end of the episode and it kind of makes sense uh because you know obviously we're gonna find some you know origin there and then a lot of people talk about the fourth great ninja war in in this and you know we're probably gonna see something regarding that and a lot of people ask me questions what we're regarding like the opening you know was it the ten tails or was it some type of new uh you know utsuki beast or some shit like that we don't necessarily know but uh this might explain to us why mitsuki's skin is extremely pale and why a lot of people think he resembles toniri maybe um it's more so one of those things where we gotta cut dry and speculate you know we gotta kind of see what where is it going but uh overall i think it's really nice i think it's really dope how they're like leading this arc and they're like basically completing things that people have a lot of questions for you know like what would boruto summoning be you know will like soccer we're sorry to get the toad summon you know will she get a snake as well we've seen her introduced to oda and you know maybe oda always oda said he always wanted to meet her so maybe oda wants to serve her just like he served sasuke you know so maybe we We'll see both of them get snakes the red and blue snake that'll be pretty interesting you know it'll be odo and garaga because these two are quote-unquote nemesis in the cave but now these two are going to be getting along so like we don't necessarily know which direction it's going to go in but overall you know what we've been seeing has been really enjoyable and i was really excited for it as a whole you know like when i was watching garaga and boruto bond inside his inner mind i was just like damn 
not to mention when we saw like the memories of the snake and we saw that Mitsuki is not necessarily evil you know Mitsuki told his snake to stop his heart for like 10 seconds so the guy didn't stab him you know what I mean and then not to mention he was like after that go find Boruto and then Boruto suck out the cave you know what I'm saying he suck out the sage snakes you know he was trying to figure out what was going with Mitsuki not to mention he even made the bond through uh Garaga through Mitsuki because he was like you know if Mitsuki betrays me you know you can kill me right on spot I'll, I'll form a contract with you and like if if he does you know you know you could just kill me like you know if he's actually betraying me and then Boruto has a lot of faith in Mitsuki and not to mention once we seen the snake get analyzed kind of put Garaga in a weird spot because it's like Mitsuki's intention weren't wrong you know he wasn't doing anything ill-willed you know he was doing things that you know he wanted to do or you know he was trying to help like the the guy stay alive versus he could have just killed him and just kept going about his business with this mysterious group so obviously we're going to get more details about that in the future obviously things are going to start to pan out uh let me know your personal thoughts and personal opinions on episode 77 let me know how you feeling about things that have been taking place in the boruto anime regarding this arc as a whole how do you feel about mitsuki not being rogue because i know a lot of people want to see mitsuki go down a dark path but at the same time i think he's more so trying to figure himself out and that's probably has something to do with his will and you know obviously his will was implanted to him through orochimaru which would be boruto so now he wants to know is this really his will is this really what he want to seek out and stuff like that so with that being said my name is shino bentro stay true and stay real and until next time have a blessed day see you guys later Boise.